Tacticians, the Greeks came up with a very convenient notation, not this, but this. You've probably seen it before. This is what it's called the sigma. It's a Greek letter, sigma notation, or the summation notation, whichever you prefer. Why is this more convenient? Because this notation is quite complex. It has a starting point, and it has an index. I is the index. Index or indices can be I, K, J. When I from I equals 1, from the first rectangle to the last one, for example. So this means this is the limit, I'm sorry, the lower limit. It has nothing to do with this. Okay? This is not the limit operator. It just says that's the starting point. If you don't want to call it the, the lower limit, call it the starting point. So from the index i equals 1 through n, from i, from ai, for example, what is ai? And what does this mean? What is all this? How do I translate this? Okay, here's how we translate it. It's a condensed notation of the follow following. When i is 1, I have a1. Oh, I didn't mean that. Oh, I can I meant to put it in here. Okay. I don't have to erase anything. When i is 1, I have a1. The sum says plus. When i is 2, there these are all integers, no natural numbers from 1 to n. These are in our example, they will be uh, and then the number of sub it represents a, a number of sub intervals from the first one to the last one. Plus a sub two, plus a sub three, exactly three dots, plus the last one a sub n. This notation looks very sophisticated. It's not. It looks weird. It looks complicated. It's not. You're going to see as we progress that it's not. So. Another example or simple examples of the notation. The sum from i equals 2, let's say, to 4, from 3i plus 4. What does this mean? When i is 2, 3 times 2 plus 4. Plus, when i is 3, 3 times 3, times three plus 4. When i is 4. 3 times 4 plus 4. What I have to do is pr perform the calculations. 6 plus 4 is 10. 3 times 3, 9 plus 4, 13. 3 times 4, 12. 12 plus 4, 16. So this is 26, 39. Can I do this with a calculator? Yes. I can. Here it is. In math, go up, summation notation 0. Here it is. So from calculator doesn't have n, from x equals 2 to the, hold on, hold your horses, hold your horses. OK, I didn't mean that. Stop jumping. OK, 4. And I had 3i. No, not 6. 3i plus 4. And when I hit Enter, I have to get 39. If I don't get 39, I'll say oops and go back to the drawing board. OK. I didn't mean that. I meant this. So. Of course, like any notation, has properties. Of course. Properties of the sigma notation. Okay. There are three properties. I'm going to condense them in two. So one property says 
that if we add from n equals 1, let's say, to infinity, because we can have that situation, that's the situation we're going to look at. Then we put the limit in. So front. is this called? I'm just uh, sorry to interrupt. The name of the symbol is it just summation notation or is there like that? Yes. These are what's the name? summation or sigma. You either okay. say the summation notation or sigma. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Regardless of which one you prefer, they mean the same thing. So a sub n plus b sub n. What does this mean? It's the sum of a sub n plus the sum of b sub n. And yes, I like to condense these two. If you remember, it's the same with the derivative, and it's the same with the limit. The limit, and this is not the limit, but I'm just connecting the concepts. The limit of a sum of two functions is the sum of the limits. The derivative of the sum of two functions is the derivative of the two functions, the sum of the derivatives. The derivatives of a difference of two functions is the, 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 the difference of the two derivatives. So it's the same concept. It's not a new, it's not a new concept. It's, it's a new notation, but it's not a new idea. And of course, we have the n equals, let's say, 1 to infinity from a constant times n, exactly what we did with the limits, exactly the same property for differentiation. The constant goes up outside. So these are the properties. Now, what um, we need to remember or have on paper for tests and final exam um, are three, uh, four actually, uh, four identities. Four identities that use uh, the sigma notation. The sum of i. I should start with the simplest one, the sum of 1 first. Sum of 1, sum of i, sum of i squared, a sum of i, i cubed. So from um, i equals 1 through n, from i equals 1 through n, from i equals 1. Oh, I forgot to mention here that the, this is the upper limit, of course. It has nothing to do with the limit operator. It's just the end point. Starting point called limit, lower limit an endpoint uh, called upper limit. We don't say endpoint. We don't say starting point. But I don't want you to get confused and say that we are, I'm talking about the limit operator. I am not. So the lower limit is 1 and the upper limit is whatever. The lower limit here was 2. The upper limit was 4. Okay. So 1 through n from i equals 1 through n. Okay, these are identities that we can prove. They are very easy to prove using mathematical induction. We normally do this in pre-calc. We prove all these identities in pre-calc. Okay, so this is n, this number. From i equals 1 through n, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, plus 1 n times. This n, n plus 1 divided by 2. I'm going to jump to the third one because they're very easy to remember together. n, n plus 1 divided by 2, exactly the same but squared. So these two are very similar, of course. Not, not the same, but very similar. It's the same. This is the most difficult one. n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay, so now the question is, again, what are you talking about? Well, here I'm talking about 1 plus 1 plus 1, dot, 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 1. What am I talking about here? When i is 1, when i is 2, when i is 3, plus dot, 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 n. Adding Sorry, Andrew, but is for the, um, I know you said not to say star point, but for the star points on those, um, is it i equals 1 for yes, all of those? Yes, for all of them. Okay. 
And it's n of all n as well. Yes, uppercase n. Okay, thank you. Whatever that n is. So again, what does this mean? When i is 1, the sum plus plus, the sum says plus. When i is 2, plus. When i is 3, plus. When i is n, so adding these numbers together will always give us n, n plus 1 over 2, depending on n. If you stop at 7, then you have 7 times 8 divided by 2. If you want 100, then you have 100, 101 divided by 2. If you want to add from i equals 1 through 15, i squared, it means that you have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus dot, 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 plus n squared. Same thing here. What do you have here? 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus dot, 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 plus n cubed. So what does this mean again? And you'll see the use of this in a minute. So if I want the sum from i equals 2, um, we have to start at 1 or subtract. So let's say, let's keep the 1 to 15 of, let's say, i squared. Then I, I will have to have n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 divided by 6. All I have to do is just plug in 15. So this will be 15. 15 plus 1 is 16 times 30 plus 1, 31 divided by 6. I'll simplify by 3. I'll simplify by 2. So I have 40 times 31, which is... 1, 2, 1, 2, 4, 0. So with the graphing calculator, if you want to check, go back to um, and replace all this by i squared and go from 1, come on, to 15, 1, and when I hit enter, I have to get 1, 2, 4, 0. So that's how these identities work. Why do we need them? I'll show you in a minute. Why do we even talk about this? We're talking about areas, and all of a sudden, we're talking about some identities from pre-calculus. Yes, you'll see in a moment the use of this in those areas that we are trying to determine. OK. Now, notice that I did not give any sum of a trig function. I did not give any sum of a uh, inverse trig function. I did not give any sum of anything above degree 3. I did not give a sum, a sum of a log function or exponential. I did not give a sum of a um, logarithmic or um, what else, rational function or radical function. No, we're not equipped with that. We can only look at linear functions, quadratic or cubic. What? To determine this with a limit. So to determine the limit of these areas, we are limited. I cannot ask you to determine the exact area with a limit for any function other than linear, quadratic, cubic. You're not going to have a sine, cosine, tangent. You're not going to have natural log, exponential. No. Just very simple functions. Linear, quadratic, cubic. That's it. Not even beyond cubic. OK, so now we are going back to our discussion. What was our discussion? Our discussion was on function x squared plus 1. Our discussion was we found a very rough estimate of the area, somewhere between 3 and 7. The closest would be the 4.5. We had the interval 0, comma 2. And we know that the exact area will be a limit 
as the number of subintervals, lowercase n, number of subintervals. As the number of subintervals goes to infinity, of course, from the sum of the areas of those rectangles, I'm gonna, we're going to write it in a moment, from the first rectangle, I, I have to choose i, I have to use i, from i equals 1 through the last subinterval. Okay, how do we write this area? That's our next step. So this area is the product of base times height. What do you mean by base times height? Yep. Base times height plus base times height. Base times height plus base times height. Base times height plus base times height. Base times height, base times height. So the height will be denoted by our one of our best friends, delta x. Of course, I meant the base. The height is the function value. So the base, of course, is our one of our best friends, delta x. How do I determine delta x? As we did before, b minus a divided by n. So if I have the interval a comma b, I will have 2 minus 0 divided by the number of subintervals. So in our case, delta x is 2 minus 0 divided by n. Okay, now we're discussing the height. Well, the height is the function value. I'm going to write xi. Why don't I put a delta xi? It's the same fixed. It's fixed. This never doesn't change. No matter where we are on the interval. Delta x is a fixed number. 2 minus 0 over n. That's it. But the height, let's go back. The height depends on the position of x of the interval. See, for the first subinterval, this is the height f of 1. But for the second subinterval, this is the height, f of 2. So this is f of x1, and this is f of x2. And the next one will be f of x3, and the next one f of x4, and so on and so forth. So that depends on the position of subinterval. The base does not. The base stays the same. But the height is different based on where the function value is. So that's why we're going to have to make sure that we understand that this depends on i. This does not. It's a constant. You can even put it outside. You can rewrite this legitimately like this. Limit as n approaches infinity from delta x, it's a constant. This is one of the properties that we just discussed a minute ago. Here it is. It does not depend on, on the index. So it can go outside the sum from f of x i from i equals 1 through n. OK. Now, this bears a name. This has a very it bears the name of the mathematician who came up with it. The limit of the Riemann double N sum. So this is the limit of the Riemann sum. That's why we prefer keeping it here, but it doesn't matter. It's still the same thing. So the limit of the Riemann sum equals the exact area under the graph of such and such between 0 and 2, or a and b. Let's determine it now, exactly, as a first example. OK, so let's do that. Any questions? I know it's a lot, but 
as you know, the first explanation is very long, but then the next problems will be much shorter.